Welcome to Ask Andrew with Sprott Money. I'm Shiva Burnett, and today we're exploring the fascinating world of precious metals with Andrew Slay from Sprott Money. With over 32 years in the financial industry, Andrew started as an insurance broker in 1991 and later became an independent financial broker. However, he realized that traditional financial planning was not enough to truly protect his clients. So in 2017, he made a shift to focus on bullion, dedicating himself to helping people safeguard their assets by investing in precious metals. And today we will be asking Andrew questions that are coming directly from our audience. Are you ready, Andrew, to do this together? Yeah. Thank you for having me All back right. again, Shiva. And ready, ready, and let's go. Very exciting. So I have a bunch of questions that uh, our actual audience has asked to directly ask you, and I'm just going to go right at it and um, get started. So the first question is very timely. And the person is asking, with the elections coming up, how do you think this will affect the economy and precious metals? The very hot topic right now. So if they're if they're referencing who's going to win, uh, there's there's two parts to this. A, there's a chance that there may not be an election in the U.S. because of a crisis that is brewing. Uh, two, if there is an election, whoever gets into office, both parties have said they're going to go to zero percent interest rates or negative, which will completely destroy what's left of the U.S. dollar and explode gold and silver up. So either which way, there's nothing good going to come out of this. So, metals so my, place my question to, be. to that is, I know we're coming up like pretty much weeks from this election and it, it happens every so often. How would you safeguard or what would be your recommendation in terms of this type of, you know, uncertain times? What are some of the things that people should be thinking about? Minimizing your exposure dramatically uh, to the banks and minimizing your exposure to the financial sector as a whole. So you you want to take off uh, whatever portion that that uh, you want to protect and not lose and hold that in real hard assets such as gold and silver. Okay, no, that makes complete sense. Um, the other question I'm going to write into kind of falls in and the person wants to know, how do geopolitical events such as nationalization of mines impact the global supply and pricing of precious metals? So there's a good example of that right now where Mexico is going towards nationalizing their silver mines. And at one point, Mexico produced 25% of the world's silver supply. Now they're down to about 15%. And if they follow through with their nationalization program, we all know that governments cannot run you know, business that well. So you're going to see, or you're going to see a, a, um, a reduction in production. Absolutely. Okay. Um, are we ready for the next question? The person's saying, how does the potential for a market crash similar to 2008 affect the prices of gold and silver? So two things can happen there. One, uh, metal can go down. Um, it won't be going down as much as what the market will go down. So if we use 08 as an example, stock market went down 50%, but I'm not sure if, if silver and gold did the same. Uh, it followed down, but very briefly, and then it started coming back up within weeks. What's more dramatic that happened in 08, which I, I think will happen again, uh, is that the supply of silver and gold was entirely bought up. Like in the States, for example, uh, the big money poured in when the metals went down in value, and there was nothing to be bought for 16 weeks in the US. So the average consumer, you know, who calls up whoever to buy, uh, they had no stock for 16 weeks. In fact, the U.S. Mint stopped taking orders at, you know, at 16 weeks. They said, don't even bother calling us for back orders now. So um, that's going to be even more significant. And so if silver and gold go down on the next market crash, expect big, big money to go in and buy it all. If it doesn't, it'll go the opposite direction. So it's also very possible that the confidence in the stock market will be lost. And when it's going down, the money will be pouring out of there and into metals. So metals could go the opposite direction as well. So I guess the answer is to safeguard yourself, you have to get in now versus waiting for that crash to happen, as a lot of people are predicting. 
Correct. Because okay. you're, you're gambling with not getting in at all. I know. And I, I think the big question surrounding that is also with, you know, obviously real estate, because that was also very affected. And a lot of people have investment properties and things like that. I was just curious about what your opinion on that is and how would you mitigate that type of risk in that in that scenario with utilizing precious metals, let's say. Well, if you're if you have positive gains in, in multiple properties, you know, uh, takes them off the table, takes profit in those properties before you can. So I just saw uh, an article this morning, um, the uh, uh, foreclosure rate in Toronto is spiking. Yes, so, is. I mean, we're just getting started with that. And uh, there's data coming out from August to August of last year to this year that foreclosures in Canada are up 260%. Wow. And, and that's going to, you know, of that's course, only gonna get worse. the entire economy. Yes. It, that's right. I mean, the ripple effect will continue to get larger and larger. And then so properties will start to uh, cascade downward. They're still physical, but in dollar terms, they're going to be very low. And I are sorry, they're high right now, but they will be very low. And I saw another article headline this morning that in the UK, um, uh, homes are in a more or less an all time high in dollar terms over there but at a 40 year low in gold terms. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it just depends That's on what you measure. That's a very interesting it. point, right? Yeah. And, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. you also have to consider now the affordability of the prices of these homes. So how is the demand and the need going to be met if people can't afford to buy those prices, right? Is it really going to be that, keep its value at where, it, where it's at, right? Nowhere, nowhere near. We're, we're at all time highs. And we have, you know, severe economic headwinds, you know, you know, on us now in Canada. Our economy is terrible. And so people yeah. are going to be out of work and, and, and inflation is going to get worse on the dollar, which means that, you know, once food starts to react to the money printing, um, you, you wait. People all of a sudden have a 30% increase in their food bills. How are they going to pay their mortgage payment? Which is kind of already happening, Andrew. I don't know. I'm feeling it from in where I, where we are in Toronto, where the prices are really high, you know, even for the basic basket of foods that we were buying, you know, even I want to say three years ago, you know, so it's, it's, it's I definitely I can feel that. Um, I'm going to jump into our next question. Um, this person wants to know what role do technological advancements such as solid state batteries play in the demand for silver? So uh, that's going to continue to increase. Samsung just came out with their new battery invention with, you know, using a, a lot more silver in the battery, uh, doubling or tripling the, the range on the battery, and you can charge the battery in nine minutes, which will be a game changer. And that will filter down into all other battery-operated stuff, power tools, you name it, whatever. So that's going to continue to go up and up and up. Um, and that's only going to put more pressure on silver. So you know, long term, that's the place to be. So Absolutely. people shouldn't be There's looking at buying silver. Happening. Yeah. I, people shouldn't be looking at looking at buying silver to like do the paper, do the physical trade. Like I want to buy silver today and sell it next year. That's not how they should be thinking about it. Um, you know, this might be a bit off topic, but I don't know if you <clears> saw <throat> recently on Instagram, Elon Musk, you know, showed those robots that you can get into your homes and they do all the work for you. And I, I was just terrified thinking, you know, how our lives are going to change so much and, uh, you know, how that's going to affect the economy and with all the different changes that are happening. And I remember, you know, 20 years ago, we thought, you know, having FaceTime on our phones was such a big revelation. And now we look at things like robots and they're really here. Do you think that's going to affect the economy as well in terms of where we're headed with this type of... Um, technological advancements and things that are coming? It's going to be the largest massive change in human history. Yes. Like, you know, you talk about the Industrial Revolution at the turn of the 19th century when Ford started making automobiles on an assembly line, and that was a game changer. Um, then you have the introduction of the computer and how that changed everyone's lives, some to the better, some to the worse. Now you're talking about um, the AI, pardon me, the AI technology, and there's been studies on this that have revealed that there's going to be a 2.3 billion 
person job displacement over the next three years. Like I, that's I can truly see that. Yeah. Massive. Right. It, it's massive. And, and it's, I think something we're not necessarily even realizing how big that impact's going to be. I remember, you know, when they had the grocery stores where it was the auto checkout and people were a little bit upset about that, but now you got these robots coming to clean your house, babysit your kids. It's crazy what, <laughs> what they're yeah. suggesting they're going to be doing. And I think it's going to really change a whole lot of things. You know, Elon Musk had an interview over at the uh, world government council, which I'm not sure what that exactly is. It's, self-proclaimed uh, organization, I guess. But, you know, he was over in, uh, in the Arab world doing an interview uh, on stage with a presentation. And he said that with this AI, the, the world governments will be forced to come up with a universal basic income worldwide because there'll be so much <laughs> displacement. People will have to have an allowance to be able to buy stuff. And with this automation, he says that, it's going to be an abundance of production at very, very low cost. And things I, will get I cheap. I 100% can see that. And if Elon Musk is saying the person who's creating the technology, I think it's important for us to realize it's really going to impact us and we have to really prepare for those economical, unfortunately, changes that are going to happen, you know, in our basic jobs. This next question actually kind of fits in. Uh, the person wants to know, will the shift towards digital currencies affect the demand for physical precious metals? Well, my opinion on that would be that um, there's going to be people that get into the digital currencies that realize that they don't have any autonomy, uh, privacy, and all that stuff uh, any longer. And there's going to be a tremendous amount of people that want to try and transact outside that system, be it by barter and whatever. And that's what silver and gold is going to wind up being the freedom money to use. And that, that has the potential just to circulate through the economy on its own. You know, I buy for I buy uh, eggs from the farmer and give him an ounce of silver, and that farmer's buying something else, you know, for his tractor and pays it silver, and it just starts circulating through the economy that way. And I think inevitably with all the changes that are happening, if societies actually want to move away from being so controlled by robots – this is a way that we can actually do it, right? By not, by having yeah. some sort of diversification of some other tool beyond going into our, you know, watches and cards to pay for things, right? <laughs> so, and, and think, they make uh, it seem so attractive. Like, you know, you just want to do it because it's easy and it's convenient. But I think we forget how much of our freedom we're also kind of giving up on that when we're dependent on a device to make payment. Look how the yeah. public are enslaved with their phones. Yeah. Right? For a three-inch screen by five-inch screen and look, walk down the street, look where everyone's heads are. Oh, it's a you, complete you know, enslavement I, tool. I was taking the train today and I noticed like no one's even looking at each other. We're all like zombies, you know, looking at the screen <laughs> um, and missing what's happening even around us. So it's it's definitely a change. And I do I do believe that um, having other methods of being able to deal with changes in the world really does help with that. Um, okay, so let's get to our next question. Uh, this person wants to know, what's the historical significance of gold and silver as safe haven assets during financial crisis? So they want to know if there's any historical significance to that. Yeah, uh, it's, the only, um, it's the only money that has actually never bankrupted in world history. So gold and silver have been wow. around for 5,000 years and have always been the asset of, of choice, you know, and then the shenanigans of the paper currencies that we know of today, those have only been around for a thousand years. And yeah. that currency, you know, currencies created by government always have reverted to a, its real value of zero eventually. So every currency that's ever been created in history has always gone to a value of zero. Gold and silver never have, ever. That That's a pretty impressive fact, Andrew. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> yeah. I, I think sometimes, you know, we forget about the, the histor history, right? And they say, you know, the data's there, so you got to really look into it and utilize that information, right? Wow. You know, okay. to, to add question, something else to that. Sorry, go ahead. To, sorry, I just want to add something else. Like, you know, during wars and conflicts, com countries invade another land. They don't go after their currency. They go after their gold. Yeah. 
they that, seize that's a very those good kinds point. of assets, right? It makes complete sense. Okay, the next question is also kind of re relating to governments. Uh, the person wants to know how do changes in interest rates affect the attractiveness of holding precious metals? And I know like right now, we're kind of seeing a shift of the interest rates going down. They were really high. What's your opinion about this? How do you think this will affect the holdings of precious metals? Well, as soon as they start to uh, go down with the interest rates, that's going to be rocket fuel for a metal. So okay. gold and silver are going to explode upward because that's, you know, the if the economy is doing so well in Canada and the U.S., why did the our central banks cut the interest rates? Right. Right? It doesn't matter. I mean, they, <laughs> there's, they're, I mean they're, it's just an outward lie. So, you know, where do you see gold going right now? It's continuing to move up and up and up. Yes. Okay. And that's a barometer of the gold's job is to sniff out and understand what's going on with the monetary system. And, you know, it's, it's the canary in the coal mine. And gold is saying that you can't hide the shenanigans of the monetary system by the governments anymore. It knows there's a problem. And the governments are printing money and let have, you know, hand over fist. And there's no so would you say as an average person, up. would you say as an average person, then it's not necessarily, you shouldn't really worry about whether interest rates are going up or down. You should be building your plan, plan just ignoring that fact. Or do you think that as interest uh, yeah. rates are going up and down, you should have a different strategy? Well, um, at this stage, if you went back to, you know, 10 or 20 years, there probably could be a different answer to that. I think yes. now uh, it doesn't really matter if interest rates go up or down. The, the currencies are having real problems and they're headed to zero. And the Canadian yeah. dollar and the U.S. dollar, respectively, in their own countries are now worth somewhere around two cents of their own purchasing power within the borders. So when that goes to a tenth of a cent or a hundredth of a penny, I mean, if you hold these other assets based in dollars, you're holding nothing. But if you're holding gold and silver, you still have ounces of gold and silver. And they'll yeah. just be worth, in dollar terms, way more, and they protect, your, they protect your purchasing power. It makes sense. It makes complete sense. Okay, so we're coming to our last question. Um, and this person wants to know, what are some common myths about investing in precious metals that you think needs debunking? Oh, you know, things that people one. say about um, investing. <laughs> yeah. So the entire, you know, as as you said, you know, uh, people know I come from the, the traditional investing uh, industry and that whole industry is all promotion about why would you ever want to buy silver and gold? It's a high risk metal. It's volatile and it's all yeah. promoted that way by design. And the, the advisors don't even understand it's just a lie. They just, they just think it's that way because silver and gold don't do anything for a while and then they move, then they don't, then they don't move. Advisors can't make any money selling you know, gold and silver. There's no trailer fee on it. Uh, so the whole industry has been uh, set up to poo-poo on silver and gold. Now, <laughs> So there's a lot of um, miseducation out there or misinformation, 100%. I guess I could say. Yeah. Nine years ago, I had clients ask me about why, you know, should I be buying silver and gold? And my answers were completely idiotic in, in uh, you know, why would you ever want to hold it? That was my answer. Yes. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> well, I, mean, I used to I work in banking now, and though, I remember they used to give us a, like a pamphlet of how to answer the questions. Like there was, you know, this is the answer for this. This is the answer for that. There was little room for, you know, really wearing off to what the standards were in terms of percentages and what you should be diversifying in. So I do feel like, unfortunately, there's a bit of a, um, I guess, agenda or, or sort of like one strategy mindset. Um, and yeah, that causes a lot of problems because it doesn't suit so the person. That's right. So the industry, you know, we have to go right up to the very tippy top of the financial sector. The, the global elites, you know, the, the 1% money out there around the world, they want you and I in the markets. They're in gold and silver. Right. Okay? Oh, wow. That's, that's you know, a very good point. You know, they're, they're exiting the markets now and getting into gold and silver. Countries around the world are buying gold and silver at historically the largest volumes ever on, in history. Why? 
you know, they're, they're doing this because the currencies are going to fail. And when they do, they can't buy any more gold and silver. And so it's, it's the advisors out there, the entire financial system from the banks up to the brokerage houses to the mutual fund guys. Unfortunately, none of them understand or want to acknowledge there's a problem with the dollar, whatever country you're in. Doesn't matter. Okay. There's no, a problem I, I, with the I currency. Completely, I completely can see that. And I mean, a parallel for me is, you know, um, I used to be in the health and wellness industry. And so when I look at that, I look at the medical system versus like, let's say the natural remedies. And although, yeah, there's merit for both, there's a lot of brainwashing happening on one side, you know, that people feel like they have to do this. So I think when you look at our society, there is a lot of sort of, you know, agendas and sort of like, this is the way, this is, this is what you have to do. And that's why I really admire uh, what you're doing, Andrew, because I feel like you actually have the courage to speak up and to kind of, you know, bring light to a new way of thinking, at least, right? I mean, we don't make any, um, we're, we're sort of just showing people, hey, like, here's an option, here's some things to think about. And I think that's very, very important. So thank you for, you know, educating us and sharing your your knowledge and, you know, um, taking us from the one mindset, you know, it has to be this way. I think we need people like you. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, so, you so we're, we've reached, we've reached the end of our questions. Is there anything you want to leave off the viewers? Any final messages that you want to share? The floor is all yours. So we're getting pretty close to some, you know, big things happening. Uh, around the world, you know, World War III is being promoted, um, and I, there's a very real danger that could occur in the next few weeks, um, possibly as a way to postpone elections in the U.S. So keep your eyes on that. Okay. First and foremost, um, if World War III is declared on various countries, uh, there's a distinct possibility besides postponing elections, they're also going to freeze the financial system. Okay. And and if they do that, um, they can they can freeze the stock market, the bond market, the commodities exchanges, including precious metals, and also the banking system. And that's to prevent money from leaving the country that has declared war on whoever. They're going to make up whatever story they want to, but that's a possibility that could very much happen. And so, realistically, if people are waiting to see if there's another pullback, well, we had a pullback. What are you waiting for? Yeah, another pullback, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and so, you know, if people keep on sitting on the sideline, uh, they're going to get hurt financially about this. So ideally, what you need to do is start thinking about yourself as your own central bank and you have a, a certain amount of cash under your roof, under your direct control, a few months worth of bills, not cash at the bank. You don't have control over that. It's sacked. It's not even yours. That's a loan you have at the bank. And you need to back that up with precious metals that's, you know, under your control, a certain amount. If you have so much money that you have too much, you, then you have to look at having storage. But the time is getting really late for this. So you want to position yourself strategically so that if any given Monday, the system shuts down, the banks close, the brokerage houses, nothing is working. You are as little affected as possible. Your day doesn't change. And if you get to that stage, you've done a fantastic job. But if you're in, like that. you're distraught, you're like, I can't get money out of my bank. I've just lost everything. Then my goodness, make changes. If you need help, just call me. I'll tell you what you need to do and make those changes. I have, if the system shuts down tomorrow, I'm unaffected. My day doesn't change. We're all going to be lining no up on exposure. your exposure. <laughs> <laughs> that's right i'll have like my exposure to the bank is so minimal like i'll just write off the thousand bucks that's all i ever keep there and my Makes day sense. will not change so people Makes need sense. to Andrew, to how can people to get in touch with you can you share us i mean we can always put the information um below but if someone wants to book an appointment with you or you know have a more in-depth conversation what is the best way to connect with you so um in North America, you can call a toll-free number, one 861 My extension is 230, or you just call the toll-free number and just ask for me by my first name. I'm the only one here at Andrew. Um, you can email me at deathofthedollar at sproutmoney.com. 
So it's death of the dollar. It's brontmoney.com. And um, yeah, happy to answer anyone's questions if they want to reach out. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time this week to answer all the questions. And I look forward to our future conversations. Thank you again, yeah, Andrew. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Thank you.